Uh, now, uh, as you know, we spoke to Peter Ridd recently and we've been following closely his uh, various travails. And he, uh, as last week he was uh, telling us that, in fact, the Great Barrier Reef, unlike what uh, Sir David Attenborough is telling <laughs> the world and therefore destroying, uh, putting cans into near recession, uh, the Great Barrier Reef is in fine health. So indeed is Peter Ridd and so is someone who's a good friend of his and following the courtroom, sitting in the courtroom, courtside as it were, is Gideon Rosner. Welcome. Welcome to Outsiders, back to Outsiders. Gideon, how are you, mate? G'day, Ro G'day Rowan, Rita and James. I'm very well. So you've been sitting courtside with Peter Ridd this week and you've got the update for us on how it's all going. Fill us in on why you were there, what the court case is about and then where we're up to. Thanks, Gideon. Yes, um, so uh, as many of your viewers will know, back in April, Judge Salvatore Vasta found overwhelmingly in favour of Peter, finding that all 17 decisions uh, related to Peter, whether it be censures or his sacking or whatever else, were unlawful. But the decision about what Peter gets by way of compensation was reserved for a later date. So this hearing was about uh, was, the, whether, was the various parties coming together to argue why the, the remedy should be high or low, whatever else. Uh, but it was an extremely, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting it to be as interesting as the first hearing, but uh, there was plenty to come out of it. Uh, so this is all to do with him being sacked from university for basically saying that the Barrier Reef is not in good shape. So he said it was in good shape. The university said, no, it's being destroyed. He said, no, it's perfectly fine. They got rid of him is the allegation. He's suing and they've refused to settle with him. So where are we up to? Well, we're awaiting the decision of Judge Vasta. I mean, it was a... Uh, the, the, there was, um, uh, as I said, the two arguments made by both sides. The decision's been reserved. But it's looking like it'll be academic anyway, because one thing that was revealed this week when certain court documents were, were released into the public domain is extraordinarily the JCU intends to appeal. After everything that's happened, after dragging Peter through the mud, after this ugly court case, after spending, as the IPA also revealed this week from a Freedom of Inf Information request, over $630,000 on legal fees, that's taxpayers' money, uh, they are take, they're insisting, or they have the apparent plans, to drag this to a higher court. It is absolutely unbelievable. So, James, J JCU's James Cook University. James, sorry. So, uh, one of the things that I was just following a bit of the arguments that were going on just remotely, and thanks to your fantastic Twitter feed, um, but was that, uh, that uh, the University is saying that actually, in some weird way, Ridd has benefited from all of the publicity that has uh, resulted from him being fired. Can you walk us through that slightly bizarre kind of Orwellian <laughs> argument? <laughs> sure. Well, <clears throat> so sure. Well, legally, um, you know, as a matter of law, you have to work out what position you'd be in if you hadn't been sacked. So obviously, Peter was arguing he'd get X number of years' salary. The other side, to show that that should be whittled down, um, we're trying to prove that he still is able to make an income. And one absurd and indeed insulting argument that they made was that because Peter has received all this media attention over his case, because Peter's appeared on programs like this, because Peter has, had been uh, championed by, quote, reputable organisations like the IPA, and I, that's the first and only time that JCU would refer to the IPA as reputable, <laughs> I suppose, and that's nice of them. Um, because of all that, Peter will get lucrative, quote, consulting work. But they're unable to find a single uh, instance of any work that he'd been offered already or, uh, and prove it. And I don't think that argument, uh, you know, passed much muster. Rita? Uh, well, they're going to be find it difficult, aren't they, Gideon, to find how marine scientists could earn an income from, I don't know, <laughs> well, appearing let's, let's on spell Sky News. Really or... clearly, Gideon, you can play this to the judge. He never gets paid a cent to come on Outsiders or any other TV shows. There, you've got that. You can use that. Gideon, tell us, uh, your own Twitter feed apparently mm. has been called up for the uh, judges to investigate or for James Cook University to query. Are you now being dragged into the Peter Ridd affair? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I just noticed at one point uh, that um, uh, th there was a chance that they would raise the fact... Um, I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll have to go a little bit further back to give you a bit of context. Um, as you might have read from the gun reporter Charlie Peel in the Oz this week, uh, JCU are under fire from, um, uh, for putting out a media release as soon as Judge Vasta released his decision, basically saying that it was completely invalid and, almost, uh, and as, as um, the judge said, almost in contempt of court. To try to counter that, uh, they were bringing up the fact that, um, uh, that the IPA had released a media release during that day urging JCU not to appeal. Completely different case 
case, completely different set of circumstances, but uh, it looked at one point like my Twitter feed might be used as evidence in court uh, that we were effectively doing the, the wrong if, thing if as well as JC, but it didn't fly. If they do appeal uh, and uh, they're going to spend even more, more than the $630,000 they've already spent of our money fighting this academic, uh, how will Peter Ridd finance that fight? Will he need to do another crowdfund to, to, to be able to keep going? Yes, and I hope that uh, your, your viewers are reaching for, for their wallets because taking this to the federal court and then maybe even the high court, uh, depending on what happens, uh, you know, will not be a cheap exercise and it will not be a quick exercise. So to uh, fund his case so far, Peter raised about a quarter of a million dollars off GoFundMe. I dare say the platform for fundraising next time might be slightly different, but we will need to raise a lot more than that to take this to a high court and take it all the way. But uh, the details of that will be announced soon. Uh, head to ipa.org.au forward slash Peter Ridd to sign up for updates. Uh, but we will need to have you know, the same Israel Folau uh, treatment. We'll need people, pa people power to take on a taxpayer-funded behemoth. Thank you, Gideon Rosner. Keep up the great work and the Institute for Public Affairs there. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. Gideon, thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.